Hi, I'm Kate Libby, the Director of Education and the Associate Curator here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and I'd like to welcome you back to another installment of Chesapeake Treasure, a feature here on Facebook where we explore one of the more than 68,000 objects in the museum's collections. So today I wanted to explore a piece of history of one of the vessels in our collections, the Winnie Estelle. So if you've ever been down here to the museum before, that's the boat that if you want to go out for a cruise on the Miles River, you get on, on board the Winnie Estelle and you go out and, and you enjoy a day out on the water. And um, the Winnie is what we consider um, a member of our floating fleet. She is a historic vessel. Um, she was built in 1920 by Noah T. Evans, um, who lived in Crisfield, Maryland. He ran a ferry between Crisfield and Smith Island, and he built the boat and named her after his two daughters, Winnie and Estelle. Now, a by boat is really kind of like, uh, and we've got an image of Winnie Estelle here. Um, a a by boat was really designed to be kind of like a tractor trailer of the Chesapeake. You know, they were originally designed to um, take the oysters that watermen had harvested, buy them from the watermen. They worked as middlemen and then they'd go into the packing houses and sell what they had purchased. Um, in the summertime they could be put into work um, hauling produce, tomatoes, peaches, all the other things that were going to canneries throughout the Chesapeake in the 19th and the early 20th century. Now by boats were really versatile, um, but they didn't live forever. Most by boats were kind of built to last, you know, one man's lifetime. And Winnie Estelle was no exception. You know, as the uh, the oyster industry started to taper off in the 1950s and 60s, um, she was pressed further and further south um, into use hauling lumber. And so, um, in the 1970s, she ended up down in Belize. Um, she was hauling lumber in Belize, and as happens with, with Chesapeake Bay built boats, um, you know, she kind of gave up the ghost. In 1986, um, a man uh, found her sort of floating on a reef. She was adrift, she had just been left for dead, the way that actually a lot of Chesapeake work boats were left. However, this particular man, this um, Roberto had a really interesting um, idea about what he could do to save her. So. He ended up rebuilding the Winnie Estelle with Belizean hardwood, cabbage wood, and he turned her, uh, uh, Roberto Smith turned her into a pleasure cruiser. Now, what I kind of love about this is there is nothing, this is a, this is one of the objects we've just accessioned. Um, it's basically a little, you know, tr a travel flyer or a promotional brochure um, touting the fun that you can have on board the Winnie Estelle. As, so I often think of it like, you know how students in college can have a gap year where they kind of go off and they have adventures and then they come back and knuckle down? That's essentially what you've got here with Winnie Estelle. Between 1986 and 2012, she's essentially got a series of gap years where she's gallivanting around the aquamarine waters of Belize, you know, and one of the things I particularly love are the descriptions of what you can do on board her. Um, you can snorkel on the barrier reef, uh, visit underwater coral gardens, free snacks, beer, rum, and drinks. Doesn't that sound good? And it's fun for all. So, you know, I love that it, it, you definitely get a sense. Of the, and on the back here, they talk about how you know, she's got a sunshade, she's got restroom facilities, the cost includes rum punch and sodas, um, and then of course you can go out and snorkel on the reef. So, you know, this is not a typical by boat experience really, um, and it's remarkable. The, the way that she was rebuilt by Roberto Smith in the 1980s really gave her a completely new lease on life. And some of these images show her prior to and then post restoration. So you can see here she is foundering on that um, that reef um, when she was uh, discovered by Roberto Smith and he took on the project of restoration. And then you can see her afterwards as a pleasure cruiser. And what I love about it is you, if you look closely, you can see that you know this is taken down in Belize. She's got a hammock here um, attached to the mast. You know she's all about relaxation. Um, so. Winnie or uh, Winnie Estelle, you know, it, it's really a kind of remarkable um, uh, get, story of adventure um, in a way that most by boats never see. And in 2012, she was brought back to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and in 2015, the Maritime Museum um, was able to acquire her for um, for use here at the at our institution. And unlike most of the members of our floating fleet. 
Um, she is Coast Guard certified. We can take out passengers on her. You can do more than just look at her. You can get on board and have fun. And I like to think that every time Winnie Estelle goes out with a group full of kids or um, a bunch of visitors to enjoy an afternoon on the Miles River, she is revisiting just a little bit of her amazing adventures down in Belize. Um, and just so you know, um, just to document a little bit about her prior history, before she went to Belize, um, she was doing things that included unglamorously hauling fish. So this is a great image of Winnie uh, in her working heyday on the Chesapeake. So today Winnie is here um, after going to Belize and back. Um, and I like to think that uh, she is one of the hardest working by boats in the Chesapeake and one of the most remarkable too. So if you come to the Maritime Museum and you go and get on a cruise out on Winnie, now you know a little bit more about what her make, her, makes her so cool and so unique. Um, thank you so much for joining us today for Chesapeake Treasure. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about one of the cool objects in our collection. And we'll see you in a week or two for another installment here on Facebook. Thanks so much.